Beneath the cloud capped hills, amidst luxuriant woodlands and surrounded by the shimmering waters of the Omyam Lake, lays an idyllic conclave of houses and buildings that make up one unique educational institution in the northeastern region, the Union Christian College, popularly known by its acronym UCC. Jutting out into the Omyam Lake like a mini peninsula, the sprawling campus of the UCC sported tree-lined avenues, hedges of forget-me-nots, patches of greenery and quiet roofs beneath huge stately trees whose leaves flutter incessantly in the caresses of the gentle breeze. It was as quiet, as tranquil as one wishes it to be, an ideal setting for young minds to gather precious gems of knowledge. However, the place is once a wild land, stuck in timelessness, until a seed for its destiny was sown by the high ideals of its founding fathers. It was on the 22nd of September, the year 1936, that a group of representatives from various missions in Assam met in Shillong to consider the organization of a council of churches in the erstwhile undivided Assam. One year later, on the 23rd of September, the year 1937, the new authorized group met again to form a committee to set up a college. It included Rev. T. E. Puke, J. M. Forbes, Rev. J. J. M. Nichols Roy, Rai Bahadur, D. Robme, with Dr. Victor Hugo Sword as its chairman and treasurer. In 1941, the Assam Christian Council communicated with the other member-affiliated churches to generate funds for the Nobel Project and was assured of receiving four annas, that is 25 pies, each member, as well as other special gifts. Thus strengthened, Dr. Sword was entrusted with the task of procuring a suitable site for the proposed college on 28th August 1948. His pleas to the Baptist Church to provide the Guwahati campus, which had 22 acres of land, was turned down because of the financial burden it would incur. It was at this juncture that Providence took a hand when the then Siam of Millim, Sati Raja, offered to donate 900 acres of land on lease. Initially, the lease period was for 50 years at rupees 75 per annum. In 1950, buoyed by the offer, the Assam Christian Council what is known today as the Northeast India Christian Council, NEICC, reaffirmed the present location as the best site for the project and backed enthusiastically by the American Baptist Board, it voted to set the wheel in motion in July 1951. It really was remarkable that with a humble sum of just Rs. 8,475, one of the most renowned colleges in the region was established. The vision of the former leaders is to establish Christian college. So at the first meeting also they talk about these things and they form a committee in 1938 and they continue to discuss about the matter of the college and the college was established in 1952. And so it was that the long-awaited beginning of the college can see the light of day on Friday the 14th of August 1952, the day which the college celebrated as its foundation day every year.
The dedication service was held on Saturday, the 29th of August, 1953, at 12.45 p.m. to coincide with the meeting of Assam Christian Council, 12 to 30th of August, 1953, in Shillong. The official opening ceremony took place on the 7th of November, the year 1953, and it was inaugurated by Sri M. M. Chaudhary, Minister for Food and Agriculture, Government of Assam. Today, Union Christian College is run by a trust known as the North East India Christian Council NEICC, Head Office Shillong. It was permanently affiliated to Northeastern Hill University in 1992. The college was recognized by the government of Meghalaya under deficit grant and aid in the year 1993 and received recognition under Section 2F and 12B of the UGC Act 1956 in 1992. It was registered under the Meghalaya Society Registration Act 7 of 1983 on the 26th of November, the year 2009. It was notable that in retrospect, this college, which was started with just one student, could have grown to what it is today. College was really starting with a humble beginning. The thing that works here is this, that it is established in the name of God, the basic principle of our Christian faith. Every time we face a problem, college experience the adventure of faith and this experience it keep going on day by day college has never lose faith there was a time when there was no salary the college community come together and pray and the check reach the college from some well wishes so these are the experience of faith which keep on going in the life of this college till today the first student, Gaspar Lee Marwin, hailing from West Khasi Hills, was joined by Onershing Kiu Marak from Garo Hills, Yasa Thung Lotha from Nagaland, Miss Alice Lawrence from Jorhat, Teka Chang Ao Chanki from Nagaland, Sun Monger Ao Chanki from Nagaland, Plossing K. Marak from the Garo Hills, A. S. Thusem from Ukrul, Manipur, Samuel Hembrom from Golpara, Assam, Wilfred Goldsmith from Jorhat, Assam, and Elpin Stone R. Marak from Garo Hills. Uh, I was the, the student of UCC uh, from 1970 to 1976. At that time, our principal was Austin Zon, and our warden was uh, Miss Miss Das. Uh, I appreciate the works of our principal. Before we reach uh, UCC, he memorized all the names of the students. It makes me uh, feel at home. So the principal was very good to the students. Even the teachers, the professors, and lecturers are very good for us. For the students, wherever we meet them, uh, we never uh, feel shy because they make us happy. So even the students also, between the students and the professor, the lecturer also very good. Even the, uh, the students also, whenever we have difficulties, they want to help us. Uh, they did also. Here is what Mr. Gasper Lee Marwen, the first student of the UCC, has to say. I didn't have the thought of going to, to, to do any, any college anywhere. But once in the press tree at Light Museum, from, from press tree at Light Museum, Mr. Han uh, H. H. Lundo from Shillong, uh, as the registrar, one of the officers of the, the, of the UCC College, came to Light Museum to, to give the publicity about the UCC. He told also. He requested also for volunteers to go and build the touch houses in UCC. So I came out as the volunteer to lead the party. And when I announced the, in the press three, 80 people, young people, including uh, two, two pastors and the missionary, 
he joined our party, nine, eight years together. So I, I when I applied, the, you see, I, 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 I lived in the Parion, I lived at school in July. And I went, after, after July, I went to Shillong. In, on the 12th of August, I went to Dinam Hall, the office, the temporary office of BGC. And I went there to inquire whether the college will start or not. When I entered the office, I found uh, Reverend B.M. Pugh, uh, Mr. Ivan Simon, and then Miss Pugh, Miss Edith Pugh, were there. And when I entered there, I asked if the college will, uh, I mean, in the, I asked me, they asked me first, will you will go to join the college? I was wondering why they asked me that question when I, when I have to, I have applied for admission. Then I asked, will the college start? And then the principal, the, the then BMP asked me, will you go? Yes, I will go. If they, if, he said, if you, if you go, we will, we, will, we will start. We will start. Then I will go. The both, when all the people who were in the office, they clapped their hands and they came and <laughs> slapped, slapped, my, my, <coughs> slapped my back. So the next day, next day we went together to UCC. That was what I joined in UCC in, in, on the 13th of August 1952. So I feel lonely of course at first, but I determined to, to stay as a student of college. I, I must feel at home here. So that was the impression that many, many students will be coming after me. I thought like that. The classes start, of course. I was alone. And the teachers, Mr. Pew, Reverend B.M. Pew, Mr. Ivan Simon, and then Roger Tatnam, and then Ms. Abraham, they, they, they taught me one after another. Every day when I was in class, they came one after another. No, no, no bell was needed, but they told me, you stay here. As I remember, you see always the life you see, you could not find anywhere. Yes. <laughs> I like it very, very much. Very friendly with the, with the, the staff and very, very friendly with the fellow students also. Everyone who are building their own character, they must have discipline. That's the one thing. Well, discipline to know the time, to use the time in study and in working and everything else. And, and working, working hard. Everyone which is working hard, even when those students like myself also was able to slowly will be able to, would be able to, to pass. And for the future generation also, we, we aim. With aim, when we are anywhere, we should have an aim. Myself, I aim to come back to Shillong. I meant to Paryong. Because I've seen that Paryong area it's very undeveloped. So I, when I complete my, my study, I wanted to come back to Paryong. The first principal of the Union Christian College was Mr. B. M. Pugh, and the teachers at the time of its inception included Mr. I. M. Simon in the English department, Ms. Enid Pugh, Logic, Ms. Mary Abraham, History, and Mr. Raja Rathnam, Economics. But all was not touch and go. In the initial years, this was a wilderness with thick forests and dense undergrowth and wild animals to boot. It was a gargantuan task just to clear the jungle and make the place habitable. To tackle this problem, an ecumenical work camp was organized. Members of affiliated local churches enthusiastically responded to the call. They came in droves, trekking to and fro the odd eight miles from Shillong and carrying with them implements and occasionally even musical instruments to enliven the workers when they got tired. 
Others even included volunteers from USA, UK, Australia, Burma, Africa, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, to name a few. During some holidays, there were as many as 300 people working at the place. There were pastors, school teachers, doctors, students, masons, carpenters and farmers all chipping in to clear the thick lantanas, making roads and digging foundations for the buildings. In about a month, three small classroom buildings had been completed. By April the year 1952, a start was made on the staff quarters and by June, a dining hall was completed. A start was made on two hostel buildings for boys and girls, respectively. Most of the buildings were built with local materials such as bamboo for walling and rafters and thatch grass for roofing. Some of these materials were provided by the local people. A second ecumenical work camp was held in May. The campers, which included foreigners and missionaries, went on with the work cheerfully but much has still to be done. Those were the years that shaped the spirit of the place. Old-timers of the college still vividly recalled how the wind played havoc with their lives there. The site of the college lies in the path of strong winds and gales. The rickety bamboo structures did not help either. Many a story were told and recounted where buildings, roofs and all were uprooted by the wind, not to mention inconveniences. Fire hazard is another concern. Wildfires were frequent and they were mostly started by the cowherds. The thatch and bamboo huts of the time were susceptible to fire and it was in more than one occasion that a hut or house in the campus was destroyed by fire. Such incidents, though unfortunate, served to strengthen the community's sense in the place. Then there was the problem of wild animals. In those early years, the place is all but a wild land with bushes and thick forest all around. Encounters with wild animals, particularly snakes, were frequent. Foxes and even bears lived in the periphery of the campus and it was inevitable that they would come in contact with the inmates of the campus. But they have taken all of this in their strides. I was married to Mr. Austin John in 1957 and it was on the 2nd of uh, October and after a week we went down to Barapani to stay and in those days everybody la uh, stayed in huts. You know, it is just like those Nepali houses with cows it's that kind of shade and when I went there and uh, I found a hut for us very nicely prepared but of course it was an earthen floor and thatched roof and the kitchen was a bit away and I was warned that there are lots of snakes and this is one thing I'm very frightened of and uh, so I was very careful and the kitchen was a bit away from the house and one day, as I was cooking, I went out and there was a black rope across the uh, little part between the kitchen and the sleeping house. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a rope. I kicked, it didn't go, so I had two cups of tea, somebody had arrived, so I carried and gave and I told my husband, go and remove that black rope in the room. I kicked it, it didn't move. I mean, I could not throw it. Then it was a big snake it was a what you call cobra and when Austin went and took sticks and students came and it was a very big cobra and without knowing I kicked it. Snake there were plenty at that time especially one one day when one snake came into near the near the hostel one Naga friend uh, one Naga friend Sangmanga Ao he plucked the the, the the tail, the tail, tail, and showed everyone, and he shares even the 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 girls who, who were there just to to threaten them. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Lots of snakes. These adversities, on the contrary, strengthened the interpersonal relationship amongst the residents in the campus. 
driven by the old herd instinct, teachers and students alike share in such experiences and camaraderie and bonhomie involved. You can imagine what life was like in those days when there was not even electricity, not to mention running water or the service of a dhobi and barber. In such a situation, even the daily personal ablutions of which nowadays we took for granted called for homegrown ingenuity and a pinch of adventure. Kerosene was the main source of lighting in the campus in the initial years here. It was not until the year 1968 when, on the 3rd of March, electricity came to the campus and was inaugurated by E. H. Pakanthin, thus spelling the death knell of the kerosene age here. The Asia Christian College Association, London, funded the entire cost of electrification in the campus. In those days, when the reach of the post office was limited, there evolved a unique postal Letters were hand-delivered through courtesy of some jeep drivers up to a roadside shop of a nearby village. The letters were then collected by the chokidar of the college. All this was quite voluntary and it was astonishing how few letters were ever lost. Getting a haircut in those days was another seemingly unsurmountable problem. As such, most of the students would try their skill or a lack of it on each other's head. And even when the results were astoundingly peculiar, no one minded at all. We develop a skill which is built in to sustain ourselves. So in that way, we try to help each other by developing our own skill, for example, like hair cutting. We don't have a saloon nearby. Students don't have money to go to Shillong for hair cutting. So that skill is developed here by themselves. For washing, campus residents had to take their clothes to Adhobi in Shillong once a month. But later, one washerman agreed to come down weekly. The land on which the college stands initially covered 900 acres, most of which were submerged by the man-made Umyam Lake since 1964 when the hydroelectricity dam was opened. Moreover, there was a need to take up a survey of the college land and prepare a map. One kind soul who volunteered to do this was Mr. Winto Roy Maulong, the father of the incumbent principal Dr. S. R. Lindem. He not only surveyed the land for free, but also initiated realignment of the boundaries with the contiguous villages. He actively interacted with the scheme of Hima Milliam, his mintris and the headmen of the neighbouring villages. It was through his foresight and generous endeavours that there never was any kind of dispute in the area and that the college maintained a healthy relationship with the neighbouring villages. The 2nd of July, the year 2014, marked a historic monument in the college history when the presence aim of Milliam, Pa'im Latho Manik's aim, gifted the land to the college in a formal ceremony held at the college auditorium. To commemorate the signing of the land gift deed, a monument was erected on the college premises which was dedicated to the college by Pa'em Latho Manik's aim on the 62nd College Foundation on the 14th of August 2014. 
Here's what this aim of Millennium's aimship has to say about the acquiring of land of the college. This is my accomplishment. I have done to you all. Now you are secure. Now you feel, you feel very, very secure. Be happy. And I expect that through your authority, he can move to different, different departments, either here or outside the state, to bring you any project, scheme, whatever it is. We are indeed grateful to the, to the then aim of Imam Alim, Satiraja, who was so kind to give us this land, measuring them more than 900 acres on the lease basis. The lease period was for 50 years. And when the lease period expired in 2002, the present aim of Imam Alim, Lathomanic's aim, was so kind to, to give some kind of the interim extension of the lease period for five years. During the period, we entered into an understanding with the aim of Imam Alim, why don't you declare this land as a gift? Which he readily responded. And the gift deed was executed on the 2nd July 2014 here in the college itself. And the deed was signed on behalf of the NEICC by the secretary, the treasurer, and myself. And the aim of Imam Lim was represented by Mr. K. Langsti and Mr. M. B. Karupi. As of now, the total area of the land which has been gifted by the aim of Imam Lim to you, to any ICC, uh, is 300 acres more or less. We have lost more than 600 acres. Part of that 600 acres was submerged in the water when the Omiyam League came into existence. And very soon, we have a plan to have the land registered with the district authorities of the Rivoy district. It is a matter of great wonder and pride to know that the college started with a few rudimentary edifices in the form of bamboo and thatch huts. Foremost among these was the old college building which served as a classroom come chapel come library. This building, though in its slightly new avatar, still stands as a mute testimony to the resilience and spirit of the place. However, the one building that is as prominent as it was the focal point in the day-to-day -day life of the college is the chapel. In the early days, one classroom which could hardly accommodate 100 people was used as a chapel. In 1987, a silver jubilee chapel in memory of Reverend J.J.M. Nichols Roy was completed and inaugurated by the former principal Dr. H.J. Taylor. It was put to use in the year 1989 and can accommodate about 600 worshippers. The chapel committee formed in 1989 regulated the program of activities and a college chaplain was appointed with assistance provided by the Kasi Jaintia Presbyterian Synod KGP Synod and ZPS known today as the Mizo Presbyterian Synod MPS. The first semi paka building was the students' dining hall, and the first paka building was what is now the college canteen, come boys' common room. During the intervening years, many buildings came up. Being a residential college, the important buildings that had been built over the years were the hostel buildings for both 
boy and girl students. There is the main hostel building and Eldora hostel for the girls and the boys hostel are High Hall, Windham Hall named after Rev. M. E. Windham, Stanley Hall after S. D. D. Nichols Roy, Taylor Hostel for Dr. H. J. Taylor, one other hostel, Sort Memorial, is named after Dr. V. H. Sort, John's Hostel and Burnham Memorial Hall in memory of one benefactor from USA, Mrs. Burnham. Here we have uh, four buildings okay. and we divide it to four blocks also. So uh, one is main building and then in main building we have nine rooms and 28 students. Okay. So in science building we have uh, 50 rooms, around 200 students. And in uh, new building we have uh, 40 rooms, 90 students, and in New Eldora we have uh, 22 rooms with 60 students. We have the cyber room, girl mm -hmm. cyber room, uh, where students can browse the internet, collect information, have a TV room as well. and. Uh, Students, they watch the news and even some movies and all that. The campus has a number of quarters for resident teachers and staff which include among others living quarters for the college chaplain, a doctor, nurses besides other supporting staff. And of course the most popular rooms on the campus are the dining rooms, one for the boys and one for the girls. Every day, twice and thrice a day, students converge on these rooms for their daily meals of which there are 800 students, 400 boy students and an equal number of girl students. To cater to their needs, the mess had a number of workers and helpers, 16 numbers of cooks and of course the mess manager and assistant mess manager to oversee and ensure that no one is deprived of their daily meals. I've been working here since uh, 2002. From 2002 to 2009 is a college post, and then in 2009 I got a, a government sanction post. Being a warden, so I meet a lot of the students in my hostel also from different community and different states. So we are, I mean, I'm well acquainted with all of them, so I, I have no problems now with communications. So I hope that my work is, is uh, much contributing to the college. Apart from the official mess, there are two canteens within the campus set up privately but under the auspices of the college management. Students throng these canteens after classes and between meals. This is the present library of the college, a storehouse holding within it rich garners of full ripened grain of knowledge. The college library was opened on the 7th of February the year 1967 by Dr. James Sprigg, Overseas Secretary, American Baptist Foreign Missionary Society. The first librarians were Mr. Lalvo Liana and Mr. Kumut Marak. Then followed by Mrs. Lily Hicks, the first qualified librarian with a degree in library science, late Mr. T. Marbanyang and Mrs. Bonbina Wankar, who retired recently in January 2015. Recently, in November 2008, Mrs. R. Karumnud, with postgraduate degree in library science, joined to head the library staff. 
The library contains over 18,000 volumes in different subjects, including theology and religion, besides a number over 90 of magazines and journals, not only in English, but in different local languages and dialects as well. The library remains open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. An open shelf system is followed whereby the readers have direct access to the books. It has a very spacious reading hall with 25 tables, at each of which four readers could be seated comfortably. The students, especially those undertaking specialized studies, are making very good use of the library. In recent years, with generous grants from the UGC, there have been a lot of improvement in the library facilities with four computers made available for computerization of the library system. To cater to the medical needs of the residents, a dispensary was established in the early years of the college. Dr. K. Vincent's wife, Gong Perli, officially became the first nurse of the UCC. Another notable personality who had served in the dispensary as a qualified nurse was Mrs. Eldora Windham. Since then, a succession of medical personnel have taken over the running of the dispensary, the present one being Dr. Wilbur Manners. Here's what Dr. Manners and Mrs. J. Wardry have got to say about the dispensary. Medical health and health care has been given to this college uh, faculties and students right from the day of the college inception. Okay. There was a nurse working here mm -hmm. during those years and she's a missionary from Wales and she's a wife of a faculty over here only. Okay. And after that then there was a small dispensary that side of the campus were running by different staffs to some doctors who come here to help then they just started to help this college. Then I joined here in 2005 Then we started this, we shifted to this place, okay. to this dispensary. This dispensary is uh, I think uh, invaluable for this place uh, because we are catering to quite a a lot of people here okay. uh, with a college of 800 students residing um, we are handling quite a lot here uh, we have a full-time nurse and then support staff and then we have an ambulance uh, we're helping the students taking care of whatever things we can over here and then if necessary we can send, send them to Shillong as well we often cater to villages around here as well the college campus sported two playing fields, a basketball court and a football field which was inaugurated on the 5th of March the year 1969. These are perhaps the most favourite spots for students who have a taste for athletics and physical interests. They serve as an outlet for physical recreation after classes and in free times. A fairly modern swimming pool is another unique feature of the campus. No other college in the hills has the distinction of sporting a swimming pool in their campus. The college also boosts off a new indoor stadium which was completed recently. The construction of this building is funded by the University Grants Commission, UGC. Apart from other logistics such as transport and the usual infrastructure to be found within the college campus, one unique physical entity here 
is the herbal garden which was recently refurbished. UCC has made tremendous strides in academics. From a few students during its inception, the college has now on its rosters over 800 number of students. It is a far cry from those days when classes were held in thatched huts. Today, the college has proper academic blocks for its classes of different streams. Let us take a tour of the academic blocks. This is the block where art stream classes were held. The college had introduced the three-year degree course in 1962. Honours classes were started in the year 1969 for English and History. Now, the college has a number of subjects in the art stream which include Geography, Philosophy, Political Science, Economics, English and History, Education and Languages, Kasi, Assamese, Mizo, besides English. When I joined in this institution, it was a bit challenging because I had to join as a warden as well as a teacher. So during that time, it gave me the different tools to be bold and courageous. And there have been different um, events which have taught me to be, to stand for my right, to stand for what I believe in. And uh, it has also given an opportunity to have a close rapport with the students, to have that Gurukul system of education where, you know, students look up to you for, come for advice and counseling. So it has taught me a lot. I have been teaching here in UCC since 1998 February and had a, had many have had many years of teaching here and feel that I am a part of the very environment of UCC now. I don't think I can be um, taken away from this place because I feel that I'm a part of the environment. In fact, uh, I have often joked with my friends that I am fossilized here in UCC. <laughs> But uh, given a cho choice, I think I'd still prefer to stay in UCC. I wouldn't trade places with anybody. The Science Streams was inaugurated on the 30th of May 1989 with sponsorship from the Protestant Association for Cooperation in Development, EZE, Germany. Subjects offered in the science streams are chemistry, botany, zoology, physics and mathematics in both honours and pass course levels. I am originally from Kerala. I am working here from 1989. When science stream started in 1989, August 14th, I have joined in this college. Before I was coming to this college, I was working in Sainis school, Golpara. Yeah, from there I have come to see this place, Mehalaya. When I saw the lake and this uh, sceneries, I was fascinated by this college. Then the principal of, at that time called me for interview and appeared the interview and I have been selected. I am glad that I am working in this college for the last 24 years. Students here, I find they are very nice, uh, they are very cooperative and I, ha I am really enjoying teaching here because of uh, mostly their behaviour. They are so good, I mean, uh, you really enjoy teaching here. I got this uh, scholarship and I feel like it like it was a grace of God that he gave me and this scholarship helped me a lot because many times I used to think about my parents and all to, uh, because the fees is very high and all so I used to think about them and sometimes I cannot even study also when I think about it and sometimes I cannot even sleep also when I think about the fees because we are not that rich so uh, when I got this one I feel like the heaven is open, uh, the heaven open and the blessing come on only in my, in my life. And I feel all this is uh, God's grace and so all uh, I get free uh, only for examination, that is Nehu examination fees I have to pay, that too I have to pay by myself. But uh, all the mess fees and all I have to 
I uh, they paid for me and everything. I don't need to pay for mess fees and all. I just walk a little there in science building only. I just walk clean that clean toilet and all from there. So all this, but I didn't feel shy to walk all this because every walk is a good work for me. My name is Sato Safi, and I'm born in UCC. Now I'm pursuing pursuing my MSc in Nihu in mathematics honors. I used to work hard during my class hours as well as the teacher what they teach if I don't understand I have to go and ask I take help from my teachers during my BSc so because of that I got to go with this well we don't have the contribution in cash but we are supporting fully and also we also encourage our church people to go and study there and now a number of our students from our church site are also uh, our students in this uh, science block. A course on nutrition is also offered at the graduate level. The college has highly equipped laboratories where students conduct experiments with active guidance from their teachers. These labs are set up in all the science departments. Besides commerce stream up to graduate or past level, a slew of career-oriented programs were also introduced. These are short-term certificate courses sponsored by the UGC and they include beauty parlor management, fashion designing, GIS and computer application courses. A compulsory remedial coaching was introduced for SCST and minorities in all subjects besides an optional coaching class for service entry for SCST and minorities. The college has a wide range of extracurricular activities. One of these is the National Cadet Corps, NCC, which was established since 1963. In 2014, the NCC Girl Cadet gets its approval from the concerned authorities. Today, UCC has a contingent of both boys and girls. The campus trainings are carried out in the college regularly and an annual training camp is held every year at the Umrai Cantonment Camp. The college has got an NCC army wing under the Megalia Battalion. Dr. Milton S. Sangma was the first company commander, followed by Mr. C. Hicks, Dr. S. Payo, and Mr. Don Karluki. This unit had once produced two best cadets in the Northeast in the years 1978 to 89 and 1997 98. Other units and clubs in the college include the Sports and Fitness Club, Dramatic Club, Grievance Redressal Cell, a New Placement Cell and the Entrepreneur Development Cell and a Certificate course on Women's Studies is in the offing. Other notable organisations in the college are the Students' Representative Council and the Students' Christian Movement. The Students' Representatives Council is in effect what is called a students' union in other colleges. It works under the supervision of a professor in charge as its staff advisor who is directly appointed by the principal. Functionaries of this body are elected from amongst the students. This body takes charge of sports, social and cultural activities besides students' welfare. Being the president, I have to be a leader whom I can connect with all the teachers and the students 
who is actually studying here in this college. There's not not much uh, issues that the SRC is taking, except for the fact that we are trying to uh, create a change in the college to develop the welfare of the, the college. So we are trying to help each and every student who is actually studying in this college who have a problem to try to solve the problems as possible as we can. The Student Christian Movement, a religious-based organization with Christian ideals and principles, plays a great role in imbibing students to profess high moral and spiritual life. It is also actively involved in other areas of activities such as social services, environment awareness, literacy campaigns, leadership training and ecumenical works. And the spirit of unity comes in a community work as it has been set at an earlier time when the ecumenical camp came to this college to clear the jungle, to establish the buildings here. So the college followed the tradition of manual work and that community work we call it a work project and this work project is compulsory once in a week for all the students and teachers to join. And of late, because of the time constraint, we maintain it as a token on every college foundation day. We make one day separate for staff and students to clean the campus. This is how we live together here. I feel very nice because uh, as I'm coming here, I met so many friends uh, from different, different states and, and being involved uh, with different programs and I, and, and I have experienced a lot in this uh, college. From ACC, I've learned so many things like uh, <coughs> leadership quality and all. The SCM has contributed a lot to the college in terms of producing effective leaders in the society and the church, which is one of the principal aims of the college. One of the prestigious and revered associations in the college is the Alumni Association, which was founded on the 14th of August, 1977. Comprising of present and past students and teachers, the Alumni Association is a medium by which past college personalities could reconnect with their alma mater. The Alumni Association had undertaken several projects to inspire the students of the college and also institute some awards. Nadu bagatan hagi kelas seven, ngai osmo ika kerteng UC. The ngamtuk kadei ka ngasutuk bagadei ka Union Christian College. Teng ngamtuk adu ka mu kalong bopak koi. Antang lap koi yang ti ngalak mat ika jingker ku ling bagai jingpule ngalak yok jingi kai. คุณจะรู้ลองกักลอยอย่างนี้บรรยายได้แบบที่ไว้ปัดกิจจัยบรรเรงนำมาห้างตัวบางอย่างไหนบุญกิจเสด็จแต่งีนั่งบรรยายได
The position of the choir master has been successively held by Mr. H. D. Rongsangi, Ms. C. R. Marak, Mr. H. D. Robme, and now Dr. Rudolf Manthan Mani. The present internal quality assurance cell IQAC of UCC consists of Dr. S. R. Lindem, Principal, as Chairperson, and Dr. S. K. Singh, Department of Mathematics, as the Coordinator, with other members, which also include Mr. A. R. Mirthong, the Chairman of the Governing Board. The members of the Governing Body of the College are After the first accreditation, it makes the compulsory for the those accredited institution to open a cell called national assessment uh, called internal quality assurance cell. The main activities and the objective of the IQAC is to develop a system for the conscious, consistent and catalytic action to improve the academic and administrative performance of the institution. Internal quality assurance, basically it plans for the all-round performance and development of the institution. It is a holistic development for the academic purposes as well as the administration of the institution. The functions of the IQAC are development and application of the quality benchmark parameters for the various academic and administrative activities of the institution. Second, dissemination of the information on the various quality parameters of the higher education. Third, organization of the workshops, seminars, quality related themes, innovative practices, and the quality circles. Documentation of the various programs activities leading to the quality improvement and uh, uh, quality improvement and uh, preparation of the annual quality assurance report after the accreditation every year the iqac prepares the assurance report and send it to the nac for the further accreditation the college was accredited B level by NAAC Bangalore in the year 2004 and re accredited B grade in 2011. So, these are the innovative things, these are the uh, developments has already taken place right from the 2012, and we are going for the re accreditation again in 2017 and we are preparing for that. We are going to have the international students also. Those international students 
uh, will be uh, will be occupying a new hostel which is being created now we have got the 30 international students in the different departments who is going to stay in the hostels we got this sponsorship from a program called ICCR Indian Council of Culture Relations and they sent invitations to various countries so we all applied from our respective countries they applied we got we sat for the interviews we went for we went for the questions and shortly after our names are shortlisted and then we came as we all know the human life is composed of four aspects that is the spiritual aspect, mental aspect, social aspect, and physical aspect. According to this environment, almost all the aspects are being satisfied. When you look at the spiritual aspect, we have chapel every morning, every evening, and on Sunday all day. So that helps us to keep our spiritual life moving because that is the most important aspect of life. When you look at the mental aspect, oh my. The library is there, we have good teachers, they can explain fully. So I find myself getting more knowledge and in, equipped with knowledge. When you look at the physical aspect, there is sports. And you can go for sports in the evening in those stadium, meaning everything is almost being fulfilled physically, I can get physically fit. And when you look at the social aspect, teachers are friendly. The students are friendly, even the non-teaching staff, they're all friendly. So you get socially, you are equipped physically, mentally, and spiritually. So I find myself being full, being complete as a human being. Besides academic functions, the college is shoring up its activities. A case in point is the holding of international seminar organized by UCC on the theme Climate Change, Impact on Developing Countries. This was held from the 15th to the 17th of October 2015, in which keynote speakers from abroad participated. Exposure tours were also held for the students from time to time. What is remarkable about this college is that at any given point of time, the students' composition boasts of a wide array of ethnic groups who speak no less than 30 languages and hailing from about 13 church denominations. Apart from friendship and in the class also, there are many memories which I'll always remember in my lifetime. The other unique feature of the college is that the day here begins with worship and prayers at daybreak for students. Evening service is also a daily event for all. These are quality moments shared by teachers and students and play a great role in binding them in peace, harmony and brotherhood. This is the only education institution that uh, run by NICC. So it from its inception till now, it grows from strength to strength. And until this year, also, it produced a large number of potential persons in the government services and also in the church uh, workers. For example, as pastors and also administrators. So this. Union Christian College is very much, uh, what to say, uh, the morning star of NICC in its ministry. Now we have leader in politics, leader in education, leader in social work and so many things. So for example, we have got uh, the ex-governor of Meghalaya, Arun Musahari, who was a leader in politics. We have got the former Chief Minister of Meghalaya, S.K. Marak, a leader in politics. Then we have got so many IS officers. Now, the church also needs leaders. In those days, the church leadership is a crisis. So because of that, the college was established to produce leaders. And in the church, many people who come here, especially uh, students from Mizoram, they committed their life to be a missionary to be a pastor, to go to theology. So in this way, the college provides them the platform to finish the graduation and go for their post-graduation in theology. When I first came here to UCC, I was a little taken aback by uh, the whole 
set up. Not the place, the place is beautiful, the location is absolutely heavenly. It's like a small island. But um, the people, I think I was struck by the simplicity of the people here, the students particularly. Very simple, still very untainted by uh, city life, still very respectful towards the teachers, towards, the, uh, towards their elders. Uh, agreed that over the years things have changed a bit, but that was the one quality I think that really struck me. And perhaps that is the one quality which really works in UCC, the, the simplicity, the innocence of the people here, the respect that they have for one another and uh, the attachment and closeness that we share, the relationship we, uh, you know, we, we bond with the students because uh, it's really like a small family unit. And because it's a small family unit, the bonding is a bit more, it's, it's far closer than it would be perhaps in another college which is bigger with a bigger number of people there and uh, uh, various other uh, things that go into the making of any successful college. But here, it's this primarily and uh, maybe the spiritual background of the place. The spiritual background, I wouldn't go so far as to say as um, it's not just the religious instructions that the students and the teachers alike receive here, but uh, the spiritual, the, the spirit of this place is such that you have some sort of spiritual renewal if you come here. At least personally, that's been my experience. There are a lot of things that I learned over, my year, over the years that I have been teaching here. We value the Christian principle in this college and we have morning prayer service and also in the evening prayer service. And uh, every staff member will give a message on once in a month. And uh, we have Sunday services and students and staff actively participate on these activities. And uh, our main aim is to focus not only in studies but on the character formation. And we believe that a good society can be formed only with uh, uh, enlightened and character based uh, Christians. And students. The students live together happily and they make friends among each other. That is the vision of the North East India Christian Council and the leaders of the North East India Christian Council and the church leaders in the North East are very happy to see that. And even until now, all the churches who are the members of North East India Christian Council contributed for the college. 63 years hence, the Union Christian College is still alive and vibrant. From a little acorn, it is now a towering oak, making steadfast progress on all fronts. The UCC have lived up to its motto, Come to the Living Water, quenching the thirst of all those who had come to seek wisdom and knowledge within its hallowed grounds. The college has had a fascinating run. It is still on the path laid down by its founding fathers, keeping their vision and striving ever onward. And so once again, as the sun sets over the horizon, a new dawn will arise, where in its tryst with destiny, UCC can march ahead the passage of time, secured in the knowledge that it will have given the best to the best that had been given it. Little is much when God is in it. Uh, number one anecdote is about the transportation. The college has got only one station wagon and the station wagon is used to communicate to Shillong for the mess and for the Saturday shopping of staff and students. Now at one point of time there were 11 students, 4 teachers and 1 principal. So all of them were occupying the station wagon to go to Shillong for shopping. And when they reached the police station in Barapani, known today, in those days we call it Omiyam Khwan, police check, uh, check post. And there they were stopped by the policeman because the station wagon is so old and the people are overcrowded. Now the police officer scolded all of them saying, 
that don't you know that your college will close down if this jeep or station wagon met with an accident so from that day everybody realized that they have violated the government rules in the transportation of passengers we have not followed that so this mistake we have learned though it is humor in nature but we have learned that we should never uh, do things at random for our own convenience without following the rules and regulations now we have got a uh, Professor Brian Mingti, a psychology teacher here, uh, when his turn the chapel comes to give his sermon, Brian Mingti, being a psychology teacher, is very absent-minded. And in the middle of his sermon, he stopped his sermon and he came out from the chapel, walked straight to his own quarter. And when he reached his quarter, he found that his meal that he boiled in the morning, Sunday morning, was already spilt and burnt. So he remembered the milk while giving sermon and left the chapel. Now the message here we have learned is this, that never pray while boiling milk. Then another anecdote we have here is about the bathroom for the ladies. Now the ladies are not that they are not allowed. The ladies are allowed to take bath in the in the campus, but since there is only one bamboo pipe to transport the water connection to the campus, and for that we have got one common bathroom. So the ladies will always go and take bath in Shillong and not in UCC once a week. Then another anecdote is when there was fire in one touch quarter. Many student principal went to put up the fire and because of the spirit of unity that is there in them, instead of putting off the fire, they demolished the whole building which is still in good condition. So this also we have learned that unity is strength. In those days, nobody knows about the existing of the college inside the jungle. So no one know where to get admission, no one know where is the road to go to the college. So we have got Om Yam Khwan in those days where the vehicles from Guwahati and Nongpo before they go to Shillong they will stop there and then they will check posts and the drivers will take tea in Om Yam Khwan market. Now two staff were deputed to go and stand in that place and find out from those passengers who are going to Shillong for admission. And if there's anyone coming from Nagaland, coming from Assam, who are going to Shillong for admission, then the staff will try to advertise the college in the main road and then tell those people to come to UCC and take admission. That is how we advertise the college in those days. Then other anecdotes uh, which we have come across is about the um, Barakhana I have just mentioned which is one a very good anecdote here is that when they kill the beer and this beer takes a long time to finish eating in the mess and the more it takes long time the more smell the meat produce but very few people who remain last they were called the faithful of the beer because they could eat even the smelly meat at the end of the day 